This is the RX 7600 XT and it looks suspiciously similar to the RX 7600. Well at least in specs. It's got the same CUs as the 7600, the same ray accelerators, same cores, and same ROPs, but with a 100 MHz higher boost frequency than the 7600, and of course, double the effect of VRAM than the 7600. That makes it cost $60 more than the 7600, pretty much the same price as a 12 GB 6750 XT. At least it comes with another 8-pin connector, which should be handy for overclocking later. But does doubling the VRAM while having slightly higher clocks make the RX 7600 XT worth it? And can it finally surpass the admittedly cheaper and less VRAM equipped 4060? Or will it fail miserably, not being able to justify its extra VRAM? Let's talk about it. We'll start things off in 1080p rasterization, and in Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p at ultra settings, the 7600 XT is in the middle of the pack, slightly behind the 6750 XT, while outpacing both the 4060 and the 7600, although it's not exactly a massive difference here. There's only about a difference of 10 frames between the 7600 and the 7600 XT. In Forza Horizon 5, 1080p at extreme settings, this time the 7600 XT pulls ahead by quite a lot this time, pulling pretty close to the 6750 XT, leaving the 7600 in the dust. This might be an instance where that extra VRAM is allowing the 7600 XT to outpace the 7600 by quite a lot. In more of a competitive title now, Rainbow Six Siege at Ultra Settings, once again the 7600 XT pulls closer to the 6750 XT, but in actuality the difference between the 7600 and 7600 XT is not really a difference you would be able to tell as they're uh, getting pretty high frame rates here. You can see that the 7600 XT is now woefully outpacing the 4060 in more instances than the 7600 did. Last but not least in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p, the highest preset, the 7600 XT loses to the 4060 this time, but once again does outpace the 7600 by a little bit here. The 6750 XT is showing a strong lead as well, and overall would give better value in this instance, but we'll have to wait and see into the value comparisons. Overall for our 4 game average FPS at 1080p, the less VRAM equipped 6750 XT outpaces the 7600 XT by 6%, while the 7600 XT outpaces the 4060 also by 6%, and last but not least, outpaces the 7600 by surprisingly 15%. Now even though it's a surprising increase, considering you're paying $60 more, it's not exactly winning any value races anytime soon. Moving over to 1440p rasterization, you can see that we're becoming much more GPU bound, so the differences are going to be elevated a bit more at 1440p. Once again in Cyberpunk, we see the 7600 XT and 6750 XT neck and neck here, although the 6750 XT pulls ahead in 1% lose, as the 7600 XT takes the helm over the 4060 and the 7600, while the 7600 pulls the lead over the 4060. Interestingly though, the 7600 pulls ahead of the 6750 XT, which is quite surprising, although it might be in the realm of margin of error because the differences between these are quite small. In Forza Horizon 5, the 7600 XT pulled once again pulls ahead of the 4060 and gives quite a big increase over the 7600, which is more elevated now thanks to the fact that we're at 1440p now. So that extra VRM might be having an impact on our performance here, allowing the 7600 XT to come closer to the 6750 XT. In Rainbow Six Siege though, at 1440p, while the 7600 XT does outpace the 7600, it, again, it's not exactly a massive increase. It does outpace the 6750 XT, but gets destroyed by the 4060. Lastly, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the 7600 XT this time surprisingly loses to the 4060, but again does outpace the 7600, but this time only by about 12 frames, so it's not exactly a massive increase here. The 6750 XT shows the strongest lead of all of these cards, and arguably is a better value, which we'll see in the value comparisons. Now looking at the average FPS for 1440p, you can see that the 6750 XT takes a 7% lead over the 7600 XT, while the 7600 XT outperforms a 4060 by 6%, and this time the 7600 XT takes a 17% lead over the 7600. But of course, don't get too excited, as we look into geomean value or performance per dollar, uh yeah, you can see, the 7600 XT displays the worst value of pretty much all the cards. 
Interestingly, the 6650 XT comes out on top thanks to its judicious pricing. However, with stock dwindling of the 6650 XT, it might not be long until it's off the shelves completely. It's interesting how the 4060 was able to outclass the 7600 and 6750 XT in value only by a tiny bit though. This is because in most instances, the 4060 was pulling ahead of the 7600 and 6750 XT, which could be due to sample size as we only tested four games in this instance. Looking at power consumption, the 7600, well, it draws 31% more power on average than the good old 7600, while the 4060 relaxes with only a sub 100 watt power draw. On the other hand, the 6750 XT drew a lot more, about 13% more than the 7600 XT, which kind of aligns with its performance tier. And thus, ultimately, the 7600 XT ends up being way less efficient than the 7600 by quite a lot, but again, still not as bad as something like the 6750 XT. Well, of course, the 4060 tops the chart with its efficiency gains, again, thanks to Ada Generation architecture on the video. So overall, we can see that in rasterization, the 7600 XT fails to provide any sort of value here. Because again, you're pretty much paying $60 more for 8GB more VRAM that you don't really need. That's not going to give you an increase that's going to really matter. Especially when gaming at 1080p. In some instances, there was a massive increase like in Forza Horizon 5. But in most other instances, the difference is just too small and it doesn't really make sense. Overall, it's not looking good for the 7600 XT so far. But let's see how it goes in ray tracing at 1080p. And to start us off in Cyberpunk with Ultra settings and ray tracing set to Ultra. And we can see that the 7600 XT does pull a respectable lead over the 7600 but still fails to get anywhere close to the 6750 XT and especially the 4060. So maybe the VRM is having an impact because this is Cyberpunk running at ultra settings at 1080p, but still it's not pulling anywhere close to the, these two other GPUs. And we can see in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p with the highest preset with ray tracing set to ultra, we see the 7600 XT pull the lead over the 7600 once again by about 16 frames. So not really too noticeable, but it's still a difference nonetheless. While once again, the 4060 and especially the 6750 XT pull a massive lead over the 7600 XT. Once again, making the 7600 XT's increase in VRAM nullified, as it fails to beat the raw grunt of some of these other GPUs, especially that 6750 XT once again. Overall, for our two game average FPS for 1080p ray tracing, we see a 22% increase from the 7600 to the 7600 XT, while the 6750 XT enjoys 21% higher FPS than the 7600 XT, which is similar with the 4060. Now looking at ray tracing of 1440p starting us once again in Cyberpunk, we see the gap widen due to us becoming more GPU bound. As the 7600 XT pulls more of a respectable increase here as we go from pretty much not playable at all to semi playable on the 7600 XT. Although, once again, it is thwarted by the 6750 XT and especially the 4060. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p, the difference between the 7600 and 7600 XT is quite small this time as the 4060 and 6750 XT, especially the 6750 XT, pulls a massive lead in. Now, ray tracing is quite light in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, that's why the 6750 XT is able to pull more of a lead versus the 4060, due to its raw grunt and performance here, which is helping the 6750 XT beat the other cards. And the average FPS for 1440p in ray tracing shows again the gap widening with the 7600 XT enjoying a 27% increase in FPS over the 7600. But of course in actuality, the difference is within a little of just tens of frames. The $30 cheaper 4060 still thwarts the 7600 XT by 13%, again highlighting that more VRAM is not enough to be raw grunt alone. Finally, the similarly priced 6750 XT proceeds to outpace the 7600 XT by 25%. And as we get into performance pedola for ray tracing, the 7600 XT beats the 7600 slightly in value, but it's not anything to scoff at, as it gets demolished by both the 4060 and 6750 XT alike. The 4060 honestly is the best of the best, meaning that if you're doing anything ray tracing, the 7600 XT still isn't going to be your best bet. Power consumption is really similar to rasterization, with the 4060 drawing the least, followed by the 7600, while the 7600 XT proceeds to draw 36% more power than the 7600. 
but is still nowhere near the power draw of the 6750 XT, which aptly drew 25% more power than the 7600 XT. And of course, efficiency is unsurprising, as the 7600 XT leads the bottom of the chart along with the 6750 XT, as both the 7600 and especially the 4060 provide much more efficiency when ray tracing. So overall for ray tracing, the 7600 XT struggles to find this foothold, as it's outclassed by some of these more powerful overall competitors, as this extra 8GB of VRAM struggles once again to be justified. It did allow slightly higher gaps between the 7600 and 7600 XT, but really the difference in actuality isn't that huge anyway. How about we look at some upscaling results, shall we? We tested full motion frames and also FSR2 on the 7600 XT and the results will surprise you. In Cyberpunk 2077 1080p ray tracing with ultra settings, with ray tracing set to ultra and the upscaler set to balanced, we see the 7600 XT and 7600 pretty much neck and neck as the 4060 does end up taking the crown here. Thanks to its aid in that extra ray tracing performance which really helps it here against the 7600 XT. But in Forza Horizon 5, at extreme settings, once again with the upscaler set to balance, we see a massive increase on the 7600 XT, which outpaces not only the 4060, but also the 4060 Ti here. And the gap between the 7600 and 7600 XT is absolutely massive here. This might be an instance where that 8GB extra VRAM is helping that asynchronous compute, which runs on AFMF to produce those frames, is really allowing for this massive increase in FPS here. Now 1440p pretty much the same can be said, in Cyberpunk we see a pretty small difference between the 7600 XT and 7600, with the 4060 still taking the crown. But now Forza Horizon 5 at 1440p, the 7600 XT again takes a massive lead, even coming quite close to even something like a 4070 at 1440p, which is quite impressive here. So if you've got a 7600 XT, do consider enabling AFMF on there as that'll give you a massive performance uplift. Now moving over to some more productivity focused benchmarks here, we can see that in Blender, the difference between the 7600 and 7600 XT are extremely small. And the 6750 XT and 4060, especially the 4060 thanks to CUDA, outperform the 7600 XT twofold. Now SpecViewPerf actually shows a respectable increase going from the 7600 to 7600 XT. As in all three rendering applications including Maya, SolarWorks and 3ds Max, there's quite a respectable increase here. The 7600 XT also takes the crown over the 4060 by quite a lot here as well. However, thanks to raw GPU grunt and much better specs, the 6750XT takes a massive lead over the 7600XT in all three 3D rendering applications. Now on Puget Bench for Premiere Pro, we see once again the 7600 and 7600XT absolutely neck and neck, as not only do these have the same TMUs, ROPs, cores, they also have exactly the same encoders, which means performance in Premiere Pro is going to be identical. The 6750XT is is going to give you much better performance here. Now After Effects is a similar story, but this time interestingly the 7600 takes the lead over the 7600XT, which might be because of margin of error or something else. And once again the 6750XT, like the champ that it is, takes the crown out of all the other cards and leaves them in the dust. Now let's talk about some overclocking. On our XFX Swift 210 GPU, we were able to achieve an overclock of plus 215 on the core and 250 megahertz on the memory, while increasing the power limit to 120%, again thanks to that dual A pin. And while the Cyberpunk at 1440p ultra settings with ray tracing set to ultra, well, the difference is pretty small. In fact, that's actually an understatement. It's really goddamn small, especially for a pretty huge overclock like this. But since it's pretty much an overclock 7600 with 8 gigabytes slapped on it, it's not really that surprising that we're getting a tiny increase when overclocking. We got about 4% increase in average FPS and our lows pretty much barely changed. That being said, even though we increased our power limit to 120%, the power consumption only increased by 7% on average. There weren't really any spikes overall in power consumption either, it was pretty much smooth going. We also tested MSI Combustor 1440p to get the average temperature. And for our GPU hotspot running MSI Combustor for 10 minutes, the average temperature only increased by around 3%, so even the temperature didn't really increase that much. Which means temps aren't going to be an issue with this card even when overclocking. And that's pretty much it 
for the 7600 XT. And overall, it was pretty disappointing. And it reminds us why 8GB cards like the 7600 exist to keep the cost down for these 1080p aimed cards, as 16GB and beyond aren't needed for a resolution such as 1080p, which is really the target for something like the 7600 and 7600 XT. The $60 that you're paying is pretty much the price of the extra 8GB that you're getting, which isn't being put to good use here, and it makes utterly no sense on a card of this performance level. The best choice would be to go for something like the aforementioned 7600, or if you want to pay $30 more for better ray tracing and efficiency, then go for the 4060. Otherwise, for the same price, the RX 6750 XT can be had, which will give you much better performance overall. Anyways guys, that's all for today. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, make sure to check out this video on the screen right now.